Hi, I'm Tyron I'm Brackenridge, uh, defensive back coach for the Toronto Argonauts, retired professional football player, and also co-owner of Red Breed Athletic Academy. I'm making this Can I Be Vulnerable video just to spread awareness to uh, those that are out there who may need to hear these stories. I may touch one or two or maybe even millions of viewers to uh, be able to be vulnerable and share their stories with others. What motivates me is my baby girl, my daughter, man. That she's my biggest motivation. Like, uh, like conversation that we, we were having before, you know, and I was just telling you like, you know, you have those thoughts of, you know, like we're talking about the suicidal right. thoughts, like thinking about killing yourself and offing yourself and things like that. Like, of course those thoughts cross my mind. You know, I'm human. I'm sure a lot of other humans have thought about that, but I will never pursue nothing like that right. because of her. You know, she's my everything. She deserves her dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me as her father, I deserve and I, I owe her to be the best that I can be. You know, yeah. I owe that to her. You know, I owe being there in her life. I owe me working hard and sacrificing everything to be there for her or to provide for her. Right. But yeah, man, back in 2015, man, um, wife and I was pregnant and, uh, you know, um, Everything was seeming cool. She was having a little bit of complications, but she, we, we didn't know. Like, it, was, it wasn't nothing just too extraneous, right? right. And um, so we went in for our checkup and um, went over to the hospital. We went, she went for the checkup and everything, and she was getting the ultrasounds. And, like, everything was just kind of, like, being delayed. And, you know, they were coming in and out of the deal. and. Uh, out of the room and um, they come back in, another doctor come in, they're doing the ultrasound and they go back out and man, I, as much as I just kind of want to forget this, but I, I don't, I'll keep it with me every day, man. Um, um, no, it's cool. Um, they come back in and, and, and it was crazy though because Christine was talking like, I think something's wrong. You know, and uh, I'm like, what? Like, she's like, I don't know. I think something's wrong. And doctor came in, like, you know, like, you know, uh, you, um, you know, something's the baby's having complications, and, um, you know, she's uh, she has like this 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 large mass on her in her chest, and, um, you know, we can. We can, uh, it's a facility in uh, San Francisco. They specialize in fetal surgeries and, and all this. And so now we're like, like, and off top, like my wife is just like, great. Like, yeah. like why me, you know? Yeah. And, and she's, she's, she's like, a, she, she, she will, she, she, she's a, she's a tough individual, man. And of course, you know, she, she just, some some way somehow she kind of made it feel like it was her fault like you know and just kind of and it was just like you know needed to be tough in that situation but we but it's tough as and that's the thing we were just now it was just like all the toughness out the window but now it's like you know what now i gotta be strong for us we gonna we, everything is gonna be fine right you know everything's gonna be fine so they were like you know you guys can go up to this facility and and, and kind of go from there and see what you guys can do and so man, we made a couple trips up to uh, San Francisco and back, man, and like we went up and uh, seeing what pretty much what they can do, and so we went up another time, and basically they told us it was just like, um, you know, this mass is too big, and either we go in and do the surgery, it's still guaranteed that the baby's not gonna make it because. Um, it's just how how large the mass is and uh, the mass was like growing so much it was pushing the heart pretty much to her armpit and um and we uh like we we pretty much had to go in and uh you know had to go through the process of having a stillbirth and um and i mean like she came out and she was just like swollen, you know, because the, the blood wasn't circulating through her body enough and it just allowed her to swell up and she just quite wasn't fully developed, but she was giving, she was trying to breathe when she came out, like gave us some pumps, man. And 
Um, so Braden, 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 Braden was a survivor, man. She was she was strong, man. Like we we just held her, and I mean, and and loved her, and. It, 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 it's yeah, man. It, it's a tough. I'm glad I can talk about it now, man, because at first it was it was a very tough situation, and then just they moving forward. And I know, like our baby girl, she holds on to her every day, says a prayer for her every night, and you know as well as we do. And you know we have our butterfly urn in the in the uh, in our baby girl's room, and we keep it lit up for. Her. And um, you know, Brittany is always gonna be with us, man. Um, but it, it's a tough situation, and I know, like, like especially from for, for Brooklyn, like, and I mean, and I know for Christine as well. But Brooklyn don't. It's not a day that goes by. Like, if somebody asks, "Oh, is this the only one you have?" and I'd be like, "Yeah, it's my daughter right here." She'd be like, "No, you don't. You know, we have. Yeah, it's she like she's she gonna remind you. You know, you're not gonna, you, you, you're not gonna forget about my little sister. You know, we got Britain. And she was like, but she died when she was a baby. Da 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 da. And she she would openly say that. You know, and it's just yeah. Well, yeah, we did um, a little bit of it, not too much. I got, I think we've got to a point where we felt like we can handle it on our own, and I think that was probably the worst thing to do. You know, yeah. um, not fully talking about it, um, just even amongst each other. Right. You know, the, there was nights where we shared tears. It's nice where, you know, Brooklyn has shared tears, you know, just saying I miss my sister, right. you know, and we just got to, you know, be strong for her and console her too. And it's, you know, um, but man, it's, it's, it's something that we, 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 we didn't do, you know, and we didn't, we didn't get together, go and fully get healed through that process. And you know, and it it it, it shows, and, and and it shows. Message I want to send out, man, and the, and the biggest thing is, um, can't be afraid to to talk to somebody. You know, whether if it's a spouse, family member, therapist, whatever, you got to put yourself in a vulnerable situation if you want to get help, because there's some things that you know a lot of us we want to we want to feel like that we can handle situations on our own and a lot of times we can't and we think we have it all figured out and we can't you know and all it is it creates an underlying issue that can't be resolved if we don't go seek help to get it resolved and and nobody's perfect you know nobody will ever be perfect no matter if you think you're perfect or not it's not gonna happen it's never be afraid to reach out to somebody whether if it's individually you know spouse best friend whoever you feel comfortable with and putting yourself in a position to be in this vulnerable situation um so again man reach out to somebody if anything is bothering you you're hurting you're scarred you're dealing with something and you just you can't seem to get over that hump there's people out there that will help you and like they said closed mouth don't get fed and if you don't you don't you don't speak out you won't be hurt and that's my message.